tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, one thing which is really nice about computer animation packages such as Maya, Max and others is that they can deal with very different tasks. For example, this tutorial is basically about textures and complexity of textures, but uh, we start with uh, NURBS modeling and we end with uh, well, uh, uh, rigid body dynamics. Let's start with um, our curve now the curve tools are up here i don't want to explain it too deep in to get too much into detail because there are other tutorials which cover this anyway uh, i press and hold x so i snap the first per point and the second one on the grid and then i freely move up like this i move it a little bit to the side and i duplicate it Control d move it over here and Control d again move it over here and I want to change this slightly here. So I just move this down, maybe a little bit over here. And I move this one this way. And I do the same thing here. And now with F8, I'm back to the object selection. So I select them all actually in a certain pattern this one that one and that one and then I create a loft which is basically a surface from one curve to the next one to the next one and then now I can delete the curves and I can move it slightly up so it does not intersect with a grid let me introduce a new material and that material is a Maya Lambert shader it's the default shader anyway, but uh, I just want to make sure that we have a new shader here we, we can start fresh with. Uh, I have a light in the scene already, uh, which is not visible because I deactivated unticked lights here. It's a big light. It's an aerial Arnold area light. So Arnold renders it all right. Let's render it. Most of us think about colors when we texture things, but actually if you think about asphalt, for example, or a wall of a house, um, the texture is much more interesting in terms of the ups and downs, the irregularities in the elevation of uh, little grains on that surface, and etc. And not so much the color, the asphalt is basically gray, and a house could be painted well red or or yellow or whatever uh, but uh, the whole structure is the interesting thing and this is what I'm going to show you just to give you a little bit of inspiration we right mouse click and we have material attributes here this is our new Lambert shader Lambert 2 and I map the color with a file here is the file and I need to put in an image of a Swedish Smörebröd which is a very unsaturated, pretty dull color-wise photograph, but with a lot of texture here. And I just opened this. And it uh, uh, is being applied here. And I wonder if I can see it when clicking here. Yes, I can. This is not really interesting. Now let's go to the Arnold world. I give it a new material, and that's an Arnold standard surface shader. And uh, here I have, it's, it's slightly glossy which is the standard one. This one, you don't see the glossiness, but it is a little bit glossy uh, because specularity is all the way up. So I reduce this. Now, instead of mapping the color, I map the bump, the elevation. Uh, and it's actually not very easy to find. It's under geometry. So um, you have this AI standard surface shader. It's the same with the Maya shader, by, by the way right mouse click you have the standard surface shader which is a Maya shader it has the same way of uh, applying a bump map so it's under geometry here and you see bump mapping can be mapped right here with a file and we do the same thing as before we 
choose, here's the file node, we choose our image name, and the image name again is the Swedish Knäcke. Bröd, the Smörebröd. And now we see it in the representation here of the viewport, but when we render it, it looks really nice and complex. It doesn't give us color, it only gives us bumps, ups and downs. We can go here to the node of the, the file node, and here we have the place 2D texture node. For example, if you rotate the frame, you see that the whole map is being rotated. You can change the repetition, for example, from 1 by 1 to 20 by 30. And then you get this pattern here. What I don't really fancy is the noise UV, because it always gives us the same sort of uh, fractal pattern, but I'll show you how it works. 0 0.2 already is quite enough, and uh, you see that pattern here appear. It looks different in the viewport, but uh, you get a basic idea about it. So when we get close here, this is the impression we get. Now you can start working with the color. So you go back here to your standard surface shader and for example use one of the presets. Example, copper. And keep in mind we have these detailed structures here on a surface which is quite crude. You see it has only very few patches. It's a very simple surface. And the complexity of the surface is only important if you want to make your bumps behave like geometry. That means ups and downs, because the bump map fakes the ups, ups and downs. As you can see here, let's render this view here. You see the this part here is exactly the flow of our curve and it doesn't show us ups and downs here. So how we, can we deal with ups and downs? This is the standard surface shader. We need to go back one step for, uh, further up in the hierarchy. So this is the surface material here. This is where we came from. So we go back here. And here is the displacement material. And here you can map a new file and create a displacement shader. The more elegant way to do this is using the hypershade window, which you can reach by clicking on this icon and there are probably ways to reach it through the Windows menu. So here we have it. Actually, you see that shader here already. It's the AI standard, and when you right mouse click here, you can graph that network. So here we have our standard surface shader, and what you currently see is we have a base color which comes from the copper default, which is built in here, but what comes from outside is the placement, that's the one which we enhance with a little bit of noise here, 0 0.2. Um, this is the image file we had, the Swedish Knäckebrot, and this is the bump node which creates that up and down impression, although it's not really a change of in geometry. And it goes into the normal camera. So out normal goes into the normal camera. That's what we just saw here. Now, if we want a displacement, a real deformation of the geometry, we need to feed the information into the displacement shader as well as into the bump node or either one. So what we do now is we get it from here to there. And the connection is done and we render it again. When you right mouse click here, material attributes, you see that the displacement is actually there. It's the bump 2D, which is, well, basically feeding the photograph contrast into that surface. But why don't we see it? There's really not very much happening, is there? anything happening at all? Well, this has to do with the complexity of the, the geometry. Since our geometry is so simple, the displacement map has no chance to actually deform anything dramatically. And that's why we go into the rebuild, rebuilding that surface. 
So we use the option box because we need to put in values here. The default is 4x4. Four four. That would make the surface almost as simple as right now. But how about 60 by 40? So we have quite a high resolution now, not really dramatically high, but certainly too high for a computer game. Now let's render it again. And now you see the displacement work. So we're not talking about colors here. The color is just this copper color, but uh, we're talking about complexity of textures. And this is quite complex, isn't it? Just keep this in mind here. Remember this image. And uh, I increased the resolution of the geometry even further. So I rebuilt it again with, instead of 60, I choose 600 and 400. Lots of calculations need to be done now because of the complexity. GPU is collecting all the data now. see what nice and complex geometry we get. It's still rendering and now let's get a little bit closer again like here and maybe introduce a sky dome light which wraps around the whole scene and we render it again. took 55 seconds here with this highly complex geometry. Now what I'll do next is, just to give you even more inspiration here, I choose this view here and I render it again. Now I want to reuse this image here as a new file for a bump map for next texturing process. And for that purpose, we need high resolution. And that's why I go to view, test resolution, and I use a test resolution of 200%. So this takes a while, so I fast forward it. Well, it took eight minutes and seven se seconds to render. It's much larger than this. So how is the, this is a one to one resolution. We still have some grain here. We could raise the anti-aliasing here in the render settings. Arnold Renderer camera AA is currently set to 3. We could raise this, but we don't want to. We would just save this image here. I put it in the Source Images folder of the current project and I call it Copper Text. Now I rebuilt the surface so it is not that complex really. 100 by 80 maybe. This gives me a much lighter scene. Now I give it a new material. I sh uh, tell you why I do that, a new Lambert, because I want to get rid of all the other materials which are in the scene currently, the ones, for example, you see here. Lots of things, I just want to get rid of them because I'm using a new texture now. And in order to get rid of them very easily, I use Optimize Scene Size. And Maya asks me, do you really want to optimize this scene? The action cannot be uh, undone. Yes, I want that. And now I have, when I look back here, a very lean layout. There's basically nothing in there apart from the default shaders. Now I create a new material. Again, an Arnold standard surface shader. And... I don't want to deal with the displacement now, only with the bump mapping, so I go here. And as you might remember, down here we have the geometry. And now I map this with the new rendered file. You need to click on File first. It's not a procedural texture, for example. That's why I choose File here. And here is the File node. And here is the folder where I can choose the Copper Text JPEG. It will be converted into a TX file once I've loaded it into the scene. The image is about 4,000 pixels wide. 
shows me the previous render before it starts with the current render and I go back here to test resolution 100% that gives me a better impression of the whole thing one to one. It's much too bright that's why I delete the sky dome light and from this side you see how this new texture which is from our previous rendering what kind of good job it is doing here and again go to the hypershade right mouse click graph the network and here is the place 2d texture where you can change the texture layout reduce the coverage to 0.2 in one dimension so the texture only is living here when I increase this to 0.7 it moves up until here when I reduce this to 0.1 I have it only on this side so you can do lots of things here with just a bump mapping it is nothing it has nothing to do with color and finally yes we want to deal with dynamics we create a sphere could be a polygon sphere as well move it up because it is supposed to fall down and we're dealing with the old system of dynamics here in Maya which is cool for this purpose here we need to be under FX under fields and solvers we find the create active rigid body which will be created automatically once we apply a force field namely the gravity and now the ball falls down and it doesn't respect that surface here that's why we select it and create a passive rigid body these are the legacy rigid bodies just they work just fine and now it rolls down and then it falls into the infinite space what I did in my rendering which you've seen at the bit, very beginning is I gave this sphere the same texture as for the half pipe so existing material and it's the standard surface shader one and let's go here what you can do with rendering now is go to the render settings and under motion blur you enable the motion blur because it's a speedy thing which we're encountering here and render and here you see that fast moving sphere rolling down a bump mapped surface Is rendered at six seconds and in motion blur you need to consider higher values of anti-aliasing so to wrap this up use lots of textures here especially the very lean texturing method using bump maps colors are secondary they come next every whatsoever dull surface has a complex topology just take a photograph and apply it to your surface Till next Tuesday, bye-bye.